This week, we launched an initiative alongside companies and nonprofits to help improve research and understanding of how a person's online experiences are curated by automated processes. This will also be important in understanding more about mis- and disinformation online, a challenge that we must, as leaders, address. Sadly, I think it's easy to dismiss this problem as one in the margins. I can certainly understand the desire to leave it to someone else. As leaders, we're rightly concerned that even the most light-touch approaches to disinformation could be misinterpreted as being hostile to the values of free speech that we value so highly. But while I cannot tell you today what the answer is to this challenge, I can say with complete certainty that we cannot ignore it. To do so poses an equal threat to the norms we all value. After all, how do you successfully end a war if people are led to believe the reason for its existence is not only legal but noble? How do you tackle climate change if people do not believe it exists? How do you ensure the human rights of others are upheld when they are subjected to hateful and dangerous rhetoric and ideology? The weapons may be different, but the goals of those who perpetuate them is often the same, to cause chaos and reduce the ability of others to defend themselves, to disband communities, to collapse the collective strength of countries who work together, but we have an opportunity here to ensure that these particular weapons of war do not become an established part of warfare. In these times, I'm acutely aware of how easy it is to feel disheartened. We are facing many battles on many fronts, but there is cause for optimism because for every new weapon we face, there is a new tool to overcome it. For every attempt to push the world into chaos is a collective conviction to bring us back to order. We have the means. We just need the collective will. Shalom, Thawada, Yahweh Bash, Mavoshai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, for giving us the understanding of the Holy Bible through their men, that being the apostles and bishops of Great Millstone, who are worthy of double honours, and Yahweh Bash, Mavoshai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, Brakatham to the elect of Israel. So I'm back at you with another report. This time it's concerning New Zealand and what the Prime Minister is calling for. As you see here in the headline, it reads, New Zealand Prime Minister calls online free speech a weapon of war before demanding regulations. And this is pretty much uh, the sentiment of all of these governments around the world, not just New Zealand, because it was just about two days ago where I'd done another lesson on the Canadian government and how they're about to spend $1.9 million eradicating online extremism and online terrorism. Okay, so as you can see, this is a global agenda and this is really aimed at um, our ministry. Okay, the ministry of Yahweh Bashmah Shai, beginning with the men of Great Millstone. You know, and all these other Israelite camps out there that are teaching the gospel, that are spreading the gospel of Yahweh Bashmah Shai and teaching the Israelites about the Bible. Okay. Now we all should be very familiar with, you know, what's written concerning the famine of the word, the famine of hearing the words of our Lord, Yahweh Bashmah Shai, pursuant to Amos eight and verse eleven. And that's pretty much what's about to be fulfilled, okay very soon and this is why our lord said this here when we go to isaiah 55 and verse 6 it says seek ye the lord while he may be found and this is a message unto our people the hebrew israelites which consist of you so-called negroes latinos and native americans primarily over here in north america babylon the great because this is the main hub where you have our people, all right, collectively, the 12 tribes of Israel being oppressed together as it's written in Jeremiah 50 and verse 33. And we know that America is the main land, the main hub in which our Lord is about to destroy, okay, via World War III and these nuclear missiles. 
But this is also a message unto our people that are scattered throughout the earth amongst the nations, wherever you may be scattered. Okay, it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. And how do you seek the Lord? Well, you seek the Lord through this book. Okay, the Bible as it's written in Isaiah 34 and verse 16. Uh, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Okay, the book of the Lord, of course, being the Bible, the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. Okay, because that's where you're going to find the truth. And you can only get the true understanding of the Bible via his men, the servants, the prophets that our Lord has established to feed you with knowledge and understanding as our Lord promised through the mouth of Jeremiah. Okay, when you go to Jeremiah 3 and verse 15, what does it say? The Lord said, I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you, the Israelites, with knowledge and understanding. And that's exactly what our Lord is doing, beginning with the apostles, the bishops, the elders, and the men of Great Millstone, and like-minded righteous Israelite men that share our same doctrine, which is the doctrine of Yahweh Bashem Shai. okay? The 100% truth which we have over here at GMS. Anyway, it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Implying there's going to come a time when you're not going to be able to find the Lord. Okay? Now, right now, you can find the Lord via his men, via the servants, the prophets, those of us that are going out there on the highways and byways, on the street corners, week in, week out. And you can also find the Lord via this online ministry that we have on the YouTube. So it says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, implying there's going to come a time when you're not going to be able to find the Lord via his prophets, whether we're out there on the highways and byways, on the street corners, or you know, through the internet, through the YouTube. There's going to come a time, like I said, where the Lord is going to usher in that famine of the word. And that's pretty much what um, is getting ready to happen. That's why I'm bringing out these articles. It says, call ye upon him while he is near. And how do you call upon the Lord? Well, you have to know his name. And not only the name of the Heavenly Father, okay, the God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, and his name is Yahweh, which means he to be, he exists, or he is. Okay, because Yahweh, he is the one and only true God and we as Israelites are to worship and call upon the name Yahweh through his only begotten son our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai is the mediator between us the Hebrew Israelites and the heavenly father Yahweh okay it tells you that in the book of first Timothy 2 and verse 5 and more importantly salvation is coming through Yahweh Shai and upon Yahweh Shai's return with the holy angels He's only coming back to gather the elect of Israel. That's the only group of people that's going to be delivered from this coming destruction. As it's written in um, Matthew 24 and verse 31. So, you know, this is why it's important to know those names. All right, because we're coming into some very serious, devastating and prophetic times. And, um, you know, during these times that we're warning you about, whether it be the time of Jacob's trouble, pursuant to Jeremiah 30 and verse 7, Daniel 12 and verse 1, the books of 2nd Ezra chapter 15 and chapter 16, where all hell's about to break loose. During the physical famine, during these food shortages, during the civil unrest, you know, um, you're going to need this wisdom, man, because as it's written in Isaiah 33 and verse 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Okay, and we're coming into some very serious times. Again, the time of Jacob's trouble. And we're also fastly approaching the hour of temptation. Pursuant to Revelation 3 and verse 10. Where our faith is going to be tested by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai. Alright, tested in terms of, you know, whether you're going to take the implantable microchip in order to survive or whether you're going to lean or depend or rely upon the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai. Okay, as it's written in Isaiah 10 and verse 20, concerning the remnant, no more staying upon Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, 
but relying upon Yahweh Bashma wa Shai. Okay. In which that's what the elect of Israel are gonna do. Lord willing, we're of the elect. Okay. And of course we're approaching um the day of our Lord, whereby you're gonna have World War Three commence on a nuclear level, right? Whereby America's gonna be destroyed via nuclear missiles. In the midst of the return of our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai with the holy angels, in what people out there call UFOs. Alright, pursuant to Isaiah 66 and verse 15. And so this is why it's important that you seek Yahweh Bashma Shai while he may be found. This is why it's imperative that you get this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding while you can, okay, through this ministry. Because again, as is written in Isaiah 33 verse 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And the Lord is about to remove all this knowledge from off of the internet. And again, going back to the name, well, what does it say here in the book of Proverbs 18 and verse 10? Let's get that real quick. Because you have certain Israelite camps out there, such as IUIC, that don't stress the importance of knowing the name of our Lord. Or doing the will of those names, okay? Because it's one thing to know the name of the Lord, but it's another thing to actually do the will of Yahweh Bashma or Shai, okay? Anyway, it says here, Proverbs 18 and verse 10, the name of the Lord, which is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai, is a strong tower, okay? So the name of our Lord is a place of refuge. You know, when you're in straits, when you're in a time of difficulty, and we're coming to some very difficult times. So during these times that we're coming into, you know, we're gonna need to we're gonna need to call upon those names, man, for for salvation, for deliverance, for shelter, for protection. It says the righteous runneth into it. Who's the righteous? The elect of Israel. And that's who's gonna call upon the true name of the Lord. It says the righteous runneth into it and is safe. You see, so you know our Lord is gonna protect his elect, man, during the times that we're coming into. You know, this is why it's important that you truly understand the will of Yahweh Bashma or Shai, that you fear his name, because let's not forget what it says in Psalms 34 and verse 7. It says, The angels of the Lord, or the angel of the Lord, encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Okay, so our Lord is going to have a hedge around his elect. Anyway, man, um, you know, I don't want to make this lesson too long. But again, we have another headline here concerning the famine of the word. And that is what is fastly approaching. You know, and these Edomites aren't messing around. So let me read a little bit from this article and um, I guess I'll close out from there. All right, I won't make it too long. It says, New Zealand's Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, the woman you may recall who insisted that her constituents simply believe the government's line on the you-know-what and reject all else offhand, herded them into quarantine camps and is vehemently against the right of supposedly free people to own firearms of self for self-defense, is back with a new anti-speech, liberty-killing hot take, this time on internet regulation. And like I said, you better believe that this is a global agenda, all right? And they pretty much want to kill um, our freedom of speech mainly the speech of the servants, the prophets, because our speech is against their agenda, you know, their new world order, their great reset, their fourth industrial revolution, which at the helm of their new world order, again, they want to enslave the masses of people by way of an improbable microchip, okay, and us exposing their, their goal, their agenda, you know, we're, we're seen as a hindrance unto their plan. We're seen as a nuisance unto their plan. Okay, so, again, you better believe that this is definitely aimed at the men of the Lord, man. It says, speaking before the United Nations, so this is actually um, a speech she made at the UN, which is based out here in New York. It says, speaking before the United Nations this week, which tells you just about everything you need to know right there, Arden called free speech online a weapon of war, saying that global leaders must address the challenge of misinformation and disinformation online. 
And uh, again, you better believe that when we bring out the information concerning the mark of the beast, and that being the improbable microchip, they deem that as misinformation and disinformation. So, you know, very shortly, um, expect for more of our channels and more of our videos to get removed at a higher rate because they're doing it already. But they're going to increase that. And ultimately, they're going to ban us from the internet. And soon, they're going to come full steam ahead for the men of the Lord. And, you know, that persecution is going to take place. All right. So us brothers, we need to get our mind right, you know, because that heat is going to get turned up. Yeah, how Bash is going to turn the heat up on everyone, including us brothers. That's within the faith. That's within the ministry. Okay, so think about them scriptures like Revelation 2 and verse 10. You know, you've got Revelation 20, but there's also hope. Okay, that's the balance. You know, we can't forget about scriptures like Isaiah 59 and verse 19. You know, you've got scriptures like Isaiah 41 and verse 14, where the Lord, you know, referred to us as being a worm and that he would help us. So, you know, you've got to have a healthy balance concerning meditating upon what's you know what's coming our way so to speak so let me read these last few lines and i close out it says translation so they're going to translate you know what this woman just said any speech that doesn't line up with the government approved narrative and again our speech you know the the speech of the servants the prophets which were not speaking our own words we're speaking the words of yahweh bashme Shai. We're filtering everything that we say via the Holy Scriptures, okay? Our speech is definitely against the government's or Esau's government-approved narrative because our speech, our message, our prophecy is against Esau's New World Order. It's against Esau's Great Reset. It's against Esau's Fourth Industrial Revolution, okay? And, uh, you know, these are her words. How do you successfully end a war if people are led to believe that the reason for its existence is not only legal but noble? How do you take on climate change if people do not believe it exists? How do you ensure that human rights of others are upheld when they are subjected to hateful and dangerous rhetoric and ideology? And that's definitely aimed at us, right? Because us, the Hebrew Israelites, you know, we bring out scriptures condemning, you know, these transgenders, these homosexuals, according to Leviticus 20 and verse 13, according to Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5, just to name a few. All right. And we also speak about the hatred that the heavenly father, Yahweh, has for Esau. OK, Esau being the so-called white man, the man of sin, pursuant to Malachi 1 verse 2. Romans 9 and verse 13. So again, you know, we're at the helm of what they're saying here. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm going to end this lesson. I mean, you brothers, Lord willing, you got the gist of, you know, what's being said here. And you should know where this is going to lead to. All right. It's definitely going to lead to the fulfillment of Amos 8 and verse 11. And this is why, you know, we're warning you Israelites out there, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, to get this truth while you can, because, again, according to Isaiah 33 and verse 6, this wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And we're coming into some very serious, crucial, and perilous times. Anyway, I pray and hope you was edified, and I'll catch you, Lord willing, in the next report. Shalom. <laughs>
you know, things are gonna change real soon. And for for those of us who've been waiting sincerely and patiently, it's gonna be for the better for us, man. You know, I mean, shit ain't like the old saying saying this ain't nowhere else to go but up, man. You know, so you know that's why Spirit get on the apostles and all the rest of the brothers and elders and everybody to constantly keep exhorting each other, provoking each other, pushing each other to continue to endure because we gonna get what we waited for, man. The Most High is gonna reward us with, you know, with, with the uh, crown of righteousness, man. You know, you know, it's spiritual that we go through the things we go through because we, we're going through the sufferings of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, you know, in, in 2000, still in 2018. But now we're getting to that time, the year of, 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 the, of his redeemed, meaning the year that the Lord's gonna come back and, and deliver us, man, out of this hell.